calling now though, look at him. There's a boat on there. How did they just all of a sudden appear? That's that what was I the know. weird thing. Hey, what's up guys? Tyler here with Secure Team. Now before we get to the main topic of today's video, as you just saw, we have a bit of a breaking UFO sighting occurring right now. So a viewer of mine emailed me the link to a news story on Facebook, or well, a video on Facebook, that was posted by WROC News 8 out of Rochester, who posted this video with the simple caption, US Coast Guard says they are currently looking into a number of lights appearing over Lake Ontario. And as of this moment, the video has about 8,000 views, a ton of comments from people, uh, along with some more photographs of the lights that you're going to be seeing as I'm talking here. But uh, as far as what these lights are, we don't really have a definitive answer yet. Um, we have this string of what appears to be around eight glowing lights. Obviously, sitting in the sky here, you can even see them reflecting down below. Uh, the woman in the video, who we briefly hear, refers to the fact that it's strange how the lights simply appeared in the sky. Uh, now, through all of my research and all of the various UFO videos I've watched over the years, we've seen many sightings like this with glowing orbs in the sky. Now, first, I was inclined to think that maybe these were military flares, because if you've ever seen flares, they look very similar to this, but what was strange is that the Coast Guard knows nothing about them and has told this local news station that they are investigating it. And the words they use are lights that are appearing over Lake Ontario. So, you're seeing some other photographs here. Now, this one here definitely gives us the idea that these may very well be flares. Because as you can see, each one of the lights appears to have a smoke trail behind it. And that's common with many flares. But again, um, it's a breaking story and... As of right now, the military is not claiming responsibility for them. So that was just, that was the strange part of the story. All right, so could this be some sort of secret drill over, but why Lake Ontario? That's another strange thing. But uh, again, I was thinking maybe some of you guys may have seen this, or if you know any more information, do let me know and uh, post it down in the comments. So with that... And on to the main topic of the video, something very, very cool, which kind of ties into Lake Ontario. But what you're seeing here is the world's very first up-close look at the largest lava lake located in our solar system. So what you're seeing here is a telescopic view of Jupiter's moon Io. And if you guys don't know, Io is basically if you could if you could picture hell on a planet or on a moon that's what Io would be and it's pretty much the most violent volcanic destruction covered moon in our entire solar system and it's covered in not only volcanoes but these massive lava lakes now the lava lakes on earth are vast cauldrons of molten rock that you would definitely not want to step foot towards but as terrifyingly impressive as terrestrial lava lakes are, they have absolutely nothing on Loki Patera, which is located on Io. And this lava lake that was captured in this telescopic footage is 127 miles across and covers over 8,300 square miles, which is larger than, you guessed it, Lake Ontario. So, in a study published Wednesday in the journal Nature, researchers used a giant telescope and the movement of Jupiter's moons to get the most detailed look ever at this lava lake, taking its temperature from millions of miles away. Io itself is the most volcanically active entity in the entire solar system. Its interior is constantly heated by the gravitational pull of Jupiter and its larger moons. And so this tidal heating keeps the interior melted and ensures that large parts of the moon's surface and crust are literally made of lava. And so these massive lakes of lava dot 
the surface of Io. The moon is completely covered in these lakes and these huge volcanoes which have been seen erupting from space, as you're seeing in the images here. I mean, just look at this. I mean, can you imagine how terrifying it would be to step foot on this moon? Hell, just fly over it would be terrifying enough and pretty epic at the same time. But, you know, we have a ton of satellite images and telescopic images that have recorded some of these massive volcanic eruptions seen spewing off the moon out into space in a huge, what looks like a mushroom cloud, as if some sort of atomic bomb has been detonated on its surface. And it truly does look like a hell moon. It's crazy. And here's a, a bit of an artist rendition of what the surface may look like, but you guys can imagine as you're looking at these photographs here, it's just insane. And by the way, you guys are probably wondering what this large dark circle is passing in between the telescope and the moon. Well, that is actually another moon of Jupiter called Europa, or at least that's what they're telling us, which if you guys remember is the ice covered moon that actually has a warm saltwater ocean underneath it and is at this moment the number one candidate for alien life in our solar system. And at this very moment, we have a joint venture in the works where NASA and the European Space Agency are going to be working together in order to put a lander on the surface of Europa and likely drill down into the ice and into the ocean and possibly snap the very first picture of a giant alien squid, which they'll likely never tell us about in the first place. So back to this moon here. You're seeing this massive lake. It's bigger than Lake Ontario. It can be seen glowing from space, from ground-based telescopes, and it's truly amazing when you think of how large a lake of lava is. I mean, just how awesome is that? So really, really cool news. And before we go today, I want to let you guys know that I am in the process as we speak of setting up an interview with none other than Mr. Dave Politis. Now, if you remember, we did a video a couple days ago about all of these unexplained mysterious disappearances that are occurring in our national parks and the fact that the National Park Service seems to be trying to cover it up. It's all very mysterious. Do check out that video if you haven't. But we also spoke about the man who spearheaded the research into this phenomenon and really brought it to light to begin with. And that is Dave Polites, who, by the way, put out a series of books called The Missing 411, where he has painstakingly recorded every one of these mysterious disappearances. And man, if you guys read these books, I guarantee you, you will not be able to put them down. I mean, it's so eerie and uh, I, it's just no words. But if you saw the video, you know what I mean. So I have some very exciting information. One, we are going to get Mr. Polites on the channel for an interview. And number two, it has just come to my attention that Mr. Polites has just finished a new documentary called The Missing 411. So if you've read the books or you've watched my video and you would love to know more and wish that this was put into a documentary, well, your wish has been answered because the documentary is going to be coming out soon. And I have actually gotten an early screener of the film that I'm going to be watching and doing a review of very soon as well. So very exciting. It's going to be awesome to have David on, so do look out for that and stay tuned with the channel because I really want to dive more into these unexplained disappearances. There is definitely something going on in our national parks. I don't know what, but it's not all just people being snatched up by coyotes or mountain lions. Something else is going on here. So thank you guys for watching today. Let me know what you think about this breaking UFO sighting. If you have any info, let me know down below and stay tuned because I've got much more coming and I will see you all back in just a bit. Stay safe, guys.